obviously the students will have met me earlier and probably sick of my voice for today, but adults, you can enjoy this. Um, I'm going to be talking to you uh, today about supercapacitors. This is what my research is on. Uh, I'm a research student, which means I do a bit of studying and I do a bit of research. But what's really exciting about my role is that I get to do all these experiments that nobody else ever in the world has ever done before, which is really cool. So I'm looking at ha supercapacitors, but I want to tell you today how they are different to batteries and what they are. So you all know about batteries. Mel's told you a lot about batteries. Everyone's heard about batteries. You've all probably got one in your pocket right now. They're all over the news. They're everywhere. You see them in your cars, in your phones, in your smoke alarms, in your toys, everywhere. They're such a powerful device. Even the sun publishes on them. Right. It's got, got to be something important, right? But I want to tell you a bit about supercapacitors and how they're better. I mean, not better. I mean, how they're different to batteries. But first of all, I thought I'll tell you how batteries work so we can do a true comparison. So this is a cross section of a battery. Um, what we have here is two different materials. This one on this side, the lithium iron phosphate, this is a metal oxide. Most of you will know metal oxides, something like rust. Rust is iron oxide. We just stick a few different metals in there and then we can pop it into a battery. And the thing on the other side is graphite, like you might find in your pencil lead. Then the little purple balls on here, these are our lithium ions, as Mel has been talking about before. These lithium ions are charged lithium atoms. So when we charge our battery, these lithium ions move across into the other material, and then there is a change that happens in our material. This change in the material that happens is why batteries die as we carry on using them. Because this change keeps happening and happening and happening and the materials break down. So how do supercapacitors work? That's a slightly harder question to answer because under the umbrella of supercapacitors sits three different types. So the first type is the electrochemical double layer capacitor. Bit of a mouthful. This is based on high surface area carbons. So you could use your graphite again. Okay. The ones that I'm interested in, that my research is on, is the pseudo capacitor. And this uses more metal oxides. I look at the metals called molybdenum and niobium. And they're what I use to make these metal oxides. And then the final one is the hybrid capacitor. The hybrid capacitor is really interesting because it uses battery technology and the carbons that we see here for supercapacitor technology to create a device that potentially has the energy of a battery but the power of a supercapacitor, which is quite an interesting thing. And I think that is where the future is going to be in the hybrid capacitors. So when we actually look at a cross-section of them both, as you can see, can you tell the difference? Not really. They look quite similar. Like, mm. with, with the battery, you can see that we've got all of these lithiums sitting in the material, whereas with the supercapacitor, <coughs> it doesn't look quite the same. And the main difference here is that we tend to use two of the same electrodes, whereas with the, lithi with the lithium battery, we have two different ones. But yeah, they're, not, they're, it's, they're pretty identical, right? So when we're looking at actually how a supercapacitor works, these high surface area carbons I keep talking about, they're like loads of little particles of carbon that get stuck onto these electrodes. And the ions move into the supercapacitor and they sit on the surface of these carbons. Okay? This is where the main difference is. In the battery, you saw them go into the material and because of that, a whole material has to change. Whereas with a supercapacitor, that just doesn't happen. It goes up to the surface and it just sits there. That's why we need something that's high surface area, higher surface area, more charge storage. Okay? But there's not this big change in the material structure every time we're charging and discharging it. So how do they actually compare? So I've got this nice graph that I stole off of online because I thought it was quite good. Main thing to note here 
is, unlike the Americans, we don't like to make things really over the top and exciting, and it is a supercapacitor, not an ultra capacitor. Okay, so that is right there. Um, but as you can see, the supercapacitor beats a battery in so many ways. It's got better power density, it's got better efficiency, it can work at better temperatures, it can last up to 15 years. You're not going to see a battery last that long, are you? But the main thing that is letting it down is this energy density right here. As you can see, it's nothing in comparison to a battery. Let me explain this a bit more to you. Imagine that you gave your child a banana. They're going to last all morning. You give them some, and that will be like a battery. With the battery, they're the banana. It's great. They're going all morning. With the supercapacitor, you give them some blue Smarties. They're going to be so hyped up for the first five minutes, but then they're going to drop again. They're going to lose all that energy. So with a battery, we've got that energy given out over a longer period of time. But with a supercapacitor, it's just instant. And that's how they differ. If you were in your car and it was powered by a supercapacitor, you'd be able to drive it and then it'd stop. But with a battery, you can drive it over a long range. This is why supercapacitors are less well known and less well used in, say, the automotive sector. However, if we look into the applications, you've, obviously you've heard that batteries are really useful in electric vehicles. Um, mobile devices, uh, anything in your home as well. Whereas supercapacitors have been known more for like regenerative braking, a lot of safety systems use it, and most importantly is grid storage. So they're really useful to help smooth the grid and help smooth power as well as store charge for the grid. But you may have known that Mel mentioned earlier that batteries are going into grid storage too. So maybe they aren't so different. And now supercapacitors are driving buses. So maybe they can be used for electric vehicles. This is where this hybrid capacitor comes in that I was speaking about earlier. <coughs> this device combines these two different technologies. It uses the battery technology to give that slow release of energy over time, but it uses the supercapacitor bit to give it the extra power. People keep talking about it like it's a battle, like it's a civil war between battery man <coughs> and supercapacitor man. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad you appreciated that. Um, they, yeah, they, they're in, the, in the big scientific realms of people, they're like, nope, batteries are going to win. I don't even know what you're talking about. Supercapacitors are rubbish. And then I'm like, no, supercapacitors are the best because that's why I'm doing it. But I don't see it as a battle. It shouldn't be this rivalry to see what comes out on top. It should be, they should be working side by side. Batteries should be used for some applications, supercapacitors for others. Or why can't I have it so my car accelerates on a supercapacitor using all that power and then is driven on a battery over the long periods of time? <coughs> they can complement each other. And to kind of prove this, Tesla, the big car company, big battery car company, they have just bought out Maxwell. Probably never heard of Maxwell, but they are the biggest supercapacitor indus uh, industry in the world. And Tesla have ju just bought them out. So if that doesn't tell you that supercapacitors super could be driving our future cars, I don't know what is. So thank you for listening. I hope that was interesting for you and you've learned something. Thank you.